there. But Larson's Larson closing. Speed. Larson got the drive off the corner. He's got it down to two car lengths. Final corner. Larson up high. Hamlin right in the middle of the racetrack. Takes the air off Larson's nose and wins the worth 400. Well, Dennis does it again. Welcome in, everybody, to the post-race review of the Worth 400 at Dover. Uh, this was our only stop to Dover on the year. Track looked great. Crowd, well done. Crowd looked incredible today. Um, awesome job, Dover. Um, I did, I, I'll be honest, I don't expect to see even that good a crowd next week at Kansas. Kansas puts on some fantastic, absolutely fantastic racing. Do not get me wrong. I love the racing there. It's one of my home tracks. But its crowd could use some work, and I think they have the potential if they mark it, but I, I'm a diehard go to Kansas Speedway all the time. I've got nothing. I've got my tickets already, but I'm saying, like, you know, Gateway, I went once, and I still get emails and, and promos, and they're, they're constantly trying to get me to go back. Like, they're aggressively marketing at Gateway. Kansas, time to step it up a little bit. Anyway, welcome in. We are talking about the Worth 400 today. Um, we've got, oh, what are we doing here? Mm, I'm going to put my little logo over here. Mm, right over there. How about that? Um, but yes, we're going to be talking about it today. We're going to go through all of the reviews and parts. We'll have one little... I'll only talk about Fox once, I promise. I promise. I won't rant again. But let's go ahead and just drop right into it. Good, solid race. Let's be honest, it, it can't compete with the Xfinity race. The Xfinity race was so much better. And it's a shame. It's honestly a shame that our cup car puts on a worse show than our Xfinity car. Luckily, Xfinity doesn't run next week, so Cup is not going to look worse. And, by the way, Kansas, phenomenal for the next-gen car. Seems to work just perfectly for it. But Kansas is a stellar race track in general. It's always been great. Um, you know, there's very rarely been a snoozer at Kansas. They've always been at least decent at best. Um, so anyway, yes, we'll be going into that next week. But let's go ahead and talk about today's race. So today's race, we had Kyle Busch starting on the pole. He would lead the first uh, chunk of laps before Ryan Blaney would get passed. But shortly after Ryan Blaney would get passed, we would have our first caution of the day. The first caution of the day was due to Todd Gilliland. And as you can see, I'm going to bring up a quick replay, though. But Todd Gilliland just racing hard, trying to get inside Austin Dillon. Couldn't quite make it. Got tight. Bumps him. Loses the front. Spins around. Pretty much all it was. His day was basically ruined by that, though, because he got stuck on the apron. And not just stuck. He got stuck for, like, four laps. I mean, it took him forever to get rolling. And it's a perfect example of kind of veteran versus rookie. Uh, Kyle Busch in those situations gets the car even backwards. He'll back it all the way down the front stretch till he knows he can get turned around and get the good momentum. Uh, he got stuck, kind of tilted up on the banking, couldn't get going. So lost a ton of time. That really, really hurt his race. Um... But that was our first caution. Everybody comes down pit road, almost everybody pits. Um, so things kind of roll fairly normal through that portion of the race. After the restart, um, that's when we still have Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, or Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson. Ryan Blaney gets out front. William Byron gets by him. And it looks like William Byron's going to win the stage. But late in the stage, uh, lap traffic comes into play. Martin Truex Jr. and Tyler Reddick both come to pounce. And Truex gets both two for one and goes on to win stage one. Let's go ahead and show you our stage one results. Uh, oh, why is this? We got a race logo in the way here. Hold on a minute. Let's get that out of there. Um, all right, so that was the race logo. But anyway, uh, here's our stage one results, though. We have got uh, Martin Truex Jr., William Byron, Tyler Reddick. Uh, then we got Ryan Blaney, uh, Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch. Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. You know, you'll see a lot of trends of similar drivers in the stages and the results. There wasn't a lot of movement through the field. There really wasn't a ton of comers and goers. These the fast guys got to the front by the end of stage one and would stay there for the most for the majority of the race. Um, so now we're gonna move into the stage two results. In stage two, literally the whole thing ran caution free, just straight up. You know, run, pit stop, everything was very normal through the uh, end of stage two. So a caution-free stage leads it, and uh, Kyle Larson ends up beating Alex Bowman. Not by that much. It was actually pretty close. Um, and then we've got Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex, Chase Elliott. Look at that. We've got the Gibbs-Hendrick thing all over again. But Kyle Busch comes home P6 in that stage, Tyler Reddick 7th. Uh, we got Blaney 8th, Stenhouse 9th, and Bubba Wallace in 10th. So Stenhouse had had a great day up to this point. Unfortunately, it would not continue. Um... Moving past stage two, this is where under the caution for stage the end of stage two, the pit stop sequence gets a little dicey. Alex Bowman actually beats Kyle Larson out of the pits. He's going to have him beat, but Denny Hamlin coming out of his pit basically, I mean, had them both kind of clear and just 
starts squeezing over, and Bowman's forced to back out and, lo and, lost, and lost his position. Um, had a little damage to the nose. I don't think it was significant, but uh, I know Alex Bowman wasn't happy, and I don't blame him. Alex Bowman races people very respectfully, and I don't think he appreciates being squeezed in, out of his position that he earned on pit road. Um, so, yeah, very unfortunate there because he, he did have him beat, and then he's the one that had to yield. I think um, if he... If that happens too many times, eventually he's just going to stay in it and you're just going to have a collision on pay road and he's just going to deal with it because, um, you know, it's kind of one of those deals. Nice guys finish last and it, that really is what happened to Bowman at that point. Um, but yeah, so that's how Denny Hamlin gets the lead. Then we come back. We're getting ready to go to the restart here and we missed the restart. Like, I don't know what Fox was doing. They had a camera on the, on the cars. They flipped to the camera in the stands. They flip back and Denny Hamlin's like gone. I mean... I don't want to say he jumped the start because I couldn't see it, but good Lord, he was, I mean, it's clear by the look of it, he definitely got a big jump. Whether it was legal or not, we don't know, but that's a really big jump to have on the whole field. Not just the car beside him, but the car behind him. He had all of the whole field gapped, but we don't know because we couldn't see it. So that's why I had to shout out Fox for that, and I said, I'm not going to rant on Fox all day, but man, their amateur camera work is downright pathetic, and it it's a problem. It needs to be addressed. It's a big, big problem. I mean, oh, the, the multitude of times you're watching something develop into a corner. A guy dies low and you're like, oh, what's happening? Flip, camera moves. You can't see it. You flip back. The guy's uh, got the pass done. The other guy is back six spots. You're like, what happened? Clearly something happened. We missed it. And so, you know, it just is what it is. That's what Fox does now. We just have to sort of deal with that. And that's what it's going to be, I guess. Um, but anyway... Uh, let's go ahead and move into the actual, re or now let's talk to the results just yet. So into stage three, like I said, they missed that. There's a, they run all the way to the first cycle of pit stops. Sp pit stops kind of cycle through like normal. Everything's good. However, a caution comes out midway through the pit stop sequence. And I say midway. Daniel Hemrick stays out on the racetrack and ends up getting a spot. Now, the reason the caution came out, unfortunately, I had mentioned earlier, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. coming off pit road. He says the four ran him over. If you look at it, no, that was kind of you, Ricky. You just went on the track early and you hit him. And then you crashed. So that was pretty much on Ricky. I'm not sure why he thought that was on um, Josh Berry. I don't know what Berry would have really done there. But anyway, that causes the caution. And with that caution, you end up with Daniel Hemrick going to be your leader on the pit road. Now, everyone else had just pitted. So they're not going to come to pit road. But during that caution, as that comes out, Daniel Hemrick's going to get to pit from the lead with only about nine cars on the lead lap. So Daniel Hemrick comes down pit road. Kyle Busch comes down and Alex Bowman come down because they were at the tail of the lead lap. Didn't hurt them to pit. They they lost two spots. Not a huge deal. It did kind of cost Bowman. He didn't recover, but Kyle Busch did. Um, so that's what happens. And another guy I got to shout out um, in that pit stop sequence, um, Noah Gregson was on pit road as that took place. And so when Noah Gregson had the caution come out, he was coming out of pit road, hadn't lost a lap yet. So he gets to be tail end of the lead lap, which really helped him because then he stayed out, restarted in fifth, got, gained a spot to fourth and was able to hold fourth for like the whole rest of the run until about five to go. Then Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott got by. He comes home in uh, P6. We'll show that later here. Um, but then I had to mention the, the caution. So they get a restart and they're, they immediately have another situation. So after that restart, this is the other crash. We have an incident where I at first thought it was just Zane Smith running out of town, looking at a replay. It was tight. He got squeezed. He wiggled up. Just, it's Dover. You can't go three wide. And, and they went three wide and that's what happened. So I'm not going to put it all on Zane Smith or Bubba Wallace. Bubba was kind of innocent in it, but at the same time, pressing the issue going three wide on the exit of turn two, he did put himself in that spot. I, I don't blame him. I also know that, I, you know, in his point situation, you got to be a little more careful there. So, um, so anyway, he comes home and you can see the, the contact Bubba Wallace goes spinning, collects Christopher Bell and William Byron. I mentioned, I forgot to mention William Byron during that cycle of green flag pit stops at the end of, no, sorry, not stage two. This was in stage, or in stage two. William Byron's car fell off the jack, cost him 15 seconds. And if you know anything about 15 seconds, that's a lot of track position. So he lost a ton of track position stage two. That's why he was even back there to begin with. Gets caught up in the wreck, DNF. Uh, so a tough day for William Byron. Um, but anyway, then we go and we have a green, green flag run all the way to the end. Um, Denny Hamlin stretches it out. Really, the only reason Kyle Larson caught him was lap traffic. All Denny had to do was move up and block air. 
and that was it. So um, Denny Hamlin comes home as your winner. Let's go ahead and move into the race results. So in the race results here, you can see, ooh, I gotta slide over, ooh, wrong way, slide this way. Tuck myself down in the corner here. Um, I gotta go further over here. Okay, so in the in the race results, we've got Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, Martin Truex Jr. had some damage on the nose from the restart to start uh, stage three. Um, probably wasn't like it didn't kill his day, but it probably eliminated his competitive shot to win the race. Um, so he comes home in P3. Then you have Kyle Busch in fourth. We've got uh, Chase Elliott coming home fifth. I mentioned he got by Gregson in the last few laps with Kyle Busch. So. Gregson comes home sixth. Big day for him. He needs that back-to-back -to -back top tens. Uh, almost had back-to-back -to -back top fives, but big day for him, especially trying to get back in the hunt to get back into the, the playoff contention. So Ryan Blaney comes home seventh. Alex Bowman eighth. I mentioned he tried the pit strategy. He didn't recover like Kyle Busch did. Uh, Daniel Hemrick ninth. Big top ten move. That was literally because of the uh, deci decision to stay out. Ty Gibbs comes home in P10. We've got Redick 11th. Ross Chastain 12th. Al uh, AJ Allmendinger was competitive all day right outside the top ten. Uh, so he comes home P13, Josh Berry 14th, Austin Sendrick 15th, Joey Logano, his irrelevant season continue. Man, he is off. I mean, look at... Blaney has managed to stay competitive, but man, those other two Penske cars have looked bad, and, and I think Logano has looked... I won't say worse than Cindric, but at times they have not looked good at all, and they have looked worse than Cindric. Um, Busher in 17th, and then the last first car lap down was Daniel Suarez in 18th. Chase Briscoe comes home 19th. John Hernandez in 20th. Uh, Corey LaJoy tried to pull the strain, pull the same strategy as. Daniel Hemrick in the second stage. He stayed out all the way to the end of his fuel window, but never caught the caution. Ends up actually pulling a unique strategy that almost worked out. Just unfortunately, timing wise of the cautions, he needed that that final stage three run to go a little longer and I think, or a little shorter and he probably would have benefited because he did a wave around and things like that. So uh, Carson Hosevar, 22nd, Justin Haley, 23rd. Honestly, Justin Haley has impressed me this year. That, that Rick Ware car has found their way into the t upper twenties multiple times. And that's impressive to be in the low twenties for a Rick Ware car compared to where they were last year. So great job for Justin Haley. Zane Smith comes home 24th. I mentioned kind of caught up in his own mess. Corey Heim made his cup series debut, came home 25th, very forgettable laps down and all, but kept the nose clean. That's the big thing. Harrison Burton. I know boost was in there in the, in the live chat, uh, the miserable s ugh, career beginnings for him. And I, I can't imagine he's safe going into next year. Just it's time for a change. Um, we'll talk about it later in the week. I do have a video planned where I'm going to do a uh, NASCAR draft and I'm going to draft uh, drivers for all uh, 36 chartered teams. And I'm going to also draft the best 36 drivers available on the market. Uh, Austin Dillon home was just off. I don't know what was wrong with that car. Kyle Busch was fourth. He was 27. That car was bad. Just bad all around. Jimmy Johnson comes home in 28th. I'm not actually disappointed there. Look, he doesn't have a lot of practice in this car. I can't expect him to just hop in and run competitively. The uh, legacy cars aren't exactly lighting the world on fire, as we know. They're all um, speed impaired, shall we say. Um, so I'm not going to put too much on it. Kaz Grala comes home 29th. Uh, these guys were all four or five laps down, so this was not a good spot. Then we have Brad Keselowski, 30th. Uh, Todd, again, irrelevant all day, just off the pace, courting tires. Tire wear was not good for them. Todd Gillen, 31st. Bubba Wallace, 32nd DNF. Um, William Byron, 33rd DNF. Christopher Bell, 34th DNF. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 35th DNF. Michael McDowell DNF. I'm not sure why, uh, if he crashed or pulled off earlier. I did not see what happened, but Michael McDowell's must-win territory now. He has had so much bad luck this year. I thought he was going to be able to point his way in the playoffs. I am officially rescinding that because he has had so many DNFs on tracks where he has run, had good runs. He had tried a little strategy to get into good spots, but man, another very tail of the field finish for him, and, and you can't have that. Um, and then Ryan Priest had a fire in the foam on his door. They just pulled it off early. Didn't know what was causing the fire. They just parked it early. And so a miserable season continues for him uh, there. So that was our results from that. Um, let's go ahead and move into the standings. Um, now, I got to... Oh, it's not big enough. Uh, we're going to move into the standings here. There we go. So these are our 1 through 16 standings as they run. Now, obviously, you'll notice that um, the logos and the driver names look different. NASCAR won't update their point standing, so I don't have anything to clip off of. But anyway, here we go. So uh, Larson is still your point leader. He is 15 up on Martin Truex Jr., 33 up on Chase Elliott, 49 up on Denny Hamlin, 56 up on Tyler Reddick. So that's kind of your front five. William Byron, 62. Ryan Blaney, 68. And then this is where you start to see a little bit bigger gap starting to form between Gibbs, Bowman, 
Chastain. Kyle Busch moves up to 11th, uh, which is a big deal. Chase Briscoe still hanging on top 12. And Joey Logano is actually the last guy in the playoffs, uh, safely in the playoffs, in 13th, uh, 144 back of the leader. But uh, Bubba Wallace, Chris Buescher, and Brad Keselowski are back here, but there's guys that are going to jump at least two of them. I think uh, Chris Buescher is the last guy in at the moment. But we're going to flip so I can show you the second half of the standings. This is where our, our playoff guys are hiding. Uh, I say playoff, guys. This is where the guy, the chase to get into the playoffs begins is back here. There we go, right about there. And so you'll see that Christopher Bell in 17th. Ever since Phoenix, he has been irrelevant, completely irrelevant since Phoenix. Um, and then also Daniel Suarez, 18th. So a pair of guys that have wins, so they're probably going to make it for sure. But at the same time, belly, it has been... Uh, ugly for them, to say the least. Um, so those two would move up into the playoffs, moving uh, Chris Busher down to the cut line. He would be 16th on the board, and he would be two points ahead of Bubba Wallace, who would be 17th, one two uh, two points out. So that's where your cut line is, is between Busher and Bubba. See Brad Keselowski right there, uh, and then you go all the way back to Austin Sendrick. That's about 50 points back. So Austin Sendrick already 50 points back of the cut, but that's where I had to point out. Carson Hosevar right there and Noah Gregson overcoming that 35-point penalty. Man, you pull that 35-point penalty out, and all of a sudden he's he's right there looking in uh, to get into the playoffs. So I think Noah's got a shot, but he's going to have to execute, get some stage points, and roll in, but I'm watching him. Uh, he has caught my eye the last few weeks. John Hunter Nemechek in 22nd. Eric Jones, 23rd, obviously out of the car at least this week. We'll see if he's back by next week. Um, then we've got Josh Berry, Daniel Hamrick, Todd Gillen, down the rest of the list. Okay, had to stitch in the video. Had to have a quick uh, cut there. But anyway, uh, talking about uh, Michael McDowell. Um, he's 29th in the standings at the moment. I said he would get in on points. Obviously, I have to talk about rescinding that. Could he still make it on points? Probably. The problem is he's going to have to rely on, like, all the road courses going well, like winning both stages, finishing top 10, collecting 50-plus points on all those tracks. I mean, right now he only has 150 points total. He could score 50 points. That'd be literally a third of his current point total for the season in a race. So... I don't know if they'll try that strategy or if they're all out for the win right now. I don't mind the idea of point racing, but, man, the bad luck has just absolutely crushed him thus far. Um, so he, he is currently 29th. Corey LaJoy, 30th. 31st, Austin Dillon. 32nd, Harrison Burton. Um, it, it's time to talk about Corey LaJoy. I mean, Carson Osar is 20th. Corey LaJoy is 30th. Zane Smith is much worse, so don't get me wrong. We're, we But... What? Whoa, why is Carson Hosfer outrunning his teammate by 10 points in the positions, or in 10 points positions? Like, that that's a bit much. Um, so anyway, uh, that is our standings. We're going to go ahead and pull that back down, and we'll put the race logo back up wherever I put that. Where did I put that race logo? It's down here somewhere. There it is. We'll put that back. So anyway, guys, that will pretty much wrap up my uh, race review. Let me know your thoughts on this race in the comments below. Uh, only other point I was I had forgotten to mention was the, um, the late restart that was just like the first one fox missing it unacceptable it's fox though we just it is what it is they miss the wreck they miss they just miss everything that's all i can say they miss everything because they're never showing the action on track so that's why they never catch anything because they're always focused on stupid crap instead of what's happening but that's all i'm not going any further um so anyway guys this will be the last race review until darlington because i will be in kansas city next week for the race at the kansas speedway very excited for that but I won't be able to be at my whole setup here with my fancy mm, light up. Um, but I won't be here to record the race review until, you know, Monday or late Sunday night. Um, I may still try to make something uh, or I might do a QA and a on the way out of the racetrack on the way home. So uh, stay tuned. I will still probably try to do something live, but it'll be something more along those lines uh, rather than this type of video here. Uh, but I, who knows? I might still put one of these out every week for fun. Uh, but anyway, guys, that'll wrap up the race review for the Worth 400. It was a good time. Uh, like I said, Denny Hamlin snagging the win. You can find the Denny Hamlin race win in... Sorry. You can find the Denny Hamlin race win diecast pre-order, should have specified, at rasdiecast.com. The link will pop up here at the end of the video, so you can go over there and check that out. Use the promo code RACECRACE to get yourself 10% off. There are a ton of diecasts up for pre-order, a bunch of new arrivals that just came in, so keep an eye out for all of those if there's any of them you're looking for. And they're the elite premiums of these. You'll see them on the website. Those are the race craze editions I've talked about. They come with uh, the event pin, if I can find it. 
if I can find it's the key. Sometimes Dover can be really tough, but if I can get a hand on a race pin, the race pin comes with it, and then also, um, I'm trying to remember what else goes with that. Oh, yes, the, the card I fill out, because it's the one I will do the diecast review on, so I fill out a certificate that basically says this is the same car that was used in my video. That's it. So, um, but yeah, that's what you get. That's what the premium's for. So if you're curious, that's what that's for, um, and I can only get one. So once the one premium sells, that's it. I can't get any more. Um, so anyway, guys, Thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, we will see you for a live stream next week. Not this kind, but then we'll see you for the regular live stream and regular race review in two weeks at the Darlington Raceway. Peace out.